Tonight, we celebrate James Dickey. If I said that the stars and their courses had to do with my living in Columbia, South Carolina, this would not be entirely true. But there is something to it. In an odd way, it has come to be true. There is a dock in my backyard, and I sit there and calculate, for this is the place the stars and their courses tell me I most am at this moment in time. On the west bank of Lake Catherine in Columbia, South Carolina, 34 degrees north, 80 degrees west, nailed down by the numbers, by post-dated Pythagorean calculations, though the master's famous space-time harmonics are not heard. The music here is bluegrass. Columbia and the University of South Carolina have become essential places in the writer's life. In 1966, Dickey won the National Book Award for Buck Dancer's Choice. In the same year, he was appointed consultant in poetry to the Library of Congress. USC President Thomas F. Jones invited Dickey to be the May 1968 commencement speaker and later appointed him professor in the English department. In his suburban home in Columbia, Dickey writes in the place he calls his cave of making. Here he moves from typewriter to typewriter, from writing project to writing project. During the past quarter century, Dickey has published more than 30 major works for which he has received national and international recognition. His awards and honors include France's Pre-Medici for Deliverance and the New York Quarterly Day Award, both in 1972. In 1977, Jimmy Carter invited Dickey to read his poem, The Strength of Fields, at the Kennedy Center during the presidential inaugural ceremonies. In 1981, he received the Levinson Prize for five poems from Puella. In May 1988, he was inducted into the 50-member American Academy of Arts and Letters. Such productivity and acclaim have assured Dickey of his place, his prominence in American literature, and have fixed forever USC, Columbia, and South Carolina in the literary world. Dickey is also a practitioner of the art of teaching, an avowed enthusiast for the life of action, Dickey is equally at home in the world of the mind. In the university setting, he shares ideas and insights with faculty friends. He works closely with students and their writing. As he has stated, I'm one of the ones who should be a teacher because I do enjoy it so much. Teaching is an extremely exciting activity for me. I teach because I believe in it. The main thing that a teacher can do for a student is what Monroe Spears did for me. Confirm the student in his desire to take literature seriously. Dickey's imaginative world takes us through the ravages of World War II bombing missions, through the dangers of a canoe weekend in the hills of North Georgia, through the lyricism of a young woman's coming of age, through the magical mysteries of a child's nighttime dream world. Dickey is a visionary poet who explores ways for man to connect with the other, that perspective of anyone or anything outside of himself. He exchanges identities with the other to change his perspective. Sometimes he puts on masks or helmets or other headpieces. As soon as he puts his head inside a hollowed out wild boar's head, he immediately gains the boar's last thoughts before being killed by a hunter's arrow or on a World War II battlefield, as soon as he puts on a dead soldier's helmet, he acquires the soldier's last thoughts. As he writes in the poem, Drinking from a Helmet, I stood as though I possessed a cool, trembling man exactly my size, swallowed whole. The dead cannot rise up, but their last thought hovers somewhere for whoever finds it. Nature serves as a spiritual and aesthetic mentor for Dickey. When he steps into the heart of nature armed with primitive weapons as a hunter, he gains a degree of connection with nature, with the other. His comments indicate the special place the archer holds in Dickey's world. You see the flight of the arrow, which for me is the prettiest thing in sports. There's nothing to compare with the sale of a really nice 60 to 65 yard shot. The arc of the arrow at that range is almost unbearably beautiful. It gives the illusion of predestination. 
It seems to be following a string right to the place you want it to go. It's classically simple. The motif of man struggling to survive in nature appears prominently in Dickey's new novel, To the White Sea. In this novel, Dickey returns as well to the subject of his wartime experiences, the formative period of his life and career. To the White Sea focuses on an American pilot whose plane is shot down over Tokyo the day before the great firebombing raid on that city. As he escapes on foot in the heart of his enemy's country, his journey escalates into a brutal odyssey of self-discovery and an exploration of the primal nature of war and man. No matter what happens to his protagonist, Dickey, the writer, triumphs. He creates a rich visual scenery through a stunning narrative music on the printed page. He also creates music with the guitar he loves to play. As he says, the guitar enriches his writing process. If I had nine or ten lives, I would like nothing better than to spend one of them exploring musical possibilities. One sits there and plays and feels the vibration of the sound all the way through the back of the box into one's breastbone. And one feels that one has the right sound, at least for this particular piece. If anyone asked me as to the poetry I write, which had the most influence on my rhythmical sense, whether it would be the English prosodic tradition in literature or the pulse of the folk guitar, I could not say which was the more important. I would think probably the latter. These various places, both literal and metaphorical, convey in part the man and the artist, James Dickey. He came to this place and has lived among us for 25 years. He brings us full circle to the poetry of his home, his place, his South Carolina. The sea deer I cherish above the mountain deer, even because I have never seen them doing what I've been told they do, swimming in moonlight from island to island. I would like to see that. I am glad it happens in my state. There are deer. They do swim, and at night. And I plan to stay until I see them. Between the deer of the mountains and those of the sea, those down on the salt between the South Carolina islands, that is my balance, and it is right for me, the starry place between the antlers. Tonight, James Dickey, all of us here see with you that starry place between the antlers. We are, for a moment, part of that special place you occupy in the literary, natural, visionary world. We are with you and for you.